Hey guys, back on the quest free before it gets returned for a completely unrelated fault. I'm going to have a look at the quest free link situation. Now, I'm going to start this video off by explaining the 120 hertz mode that is enabled by default now. Does not actually change any of your standalone apps to 120 hertz. The app needs to make use of 120. There's a lot of comments saying Beat Saber's massively improved on the quest free, probably because of the controllers, but the app itself on standalone is not using 120 hertz um so yeah i don't know what people are parroting on about 120 hertz and beat saber it's not actually been updated um i'll show that in a different video so we're going to focus on pc vr with oculus link cable now 120 hertz should be available what i'm immediately going to show is due to the, the nature of how rushed this headset is with all the bugs that i'm finding it's not 120 hertz it's actually 90. now if I check the desktop, I can show that I'm going to start off with the default Quest 2 stuff that I use. I know you can go higher bitrate on the Quest 3, but I'm going to explain what I'm looking for in a second. The microphone's broken on Quest 3 Link for whatever reason. Quest 2 is fine. Quest 3 Link microphone is broken, so I can't use a microphone on PC. And the 120 hertz mode is completely missing. Now, this is available on Quest 2. It's not on the Quest 3. So... Straight away, you've got a worse experience. Yes, you've got better panels and better visuals, but um, the resolution value that Oculus Link gives you isn't actually changed from the Quest 2, so you're not actually getting any more resolution bump. Um, the only difference you're seeing is the panel itself and the lenses. So we're stuck at 90 hertz here, and I know from my testing on Quest 2, my app to motion to photon latency, I cannot get any lower than 35 milliseconds. Um, so we're going to be around that time. I mean, realistically, it's around 33 on absolute potato mode. That's this render resolution and under sampling Beat Saber. It's about 33 milliseconds for 90 hertz. About 31, just under 31 um, at 120 hertz mode on Quest 2. So compared to my Oculus CV1, that's obviously not great. Um, that had 18 milliseconds. Um, it's just a bottleneck within Link that's not changed throughout my PC hardware. Or even these PC headsets, the, the Quest 2 and Quest 3 headsets. So we've got a bottleneck of Oculus Link itself. Now I'm going to leave this maxed as it was. And I'm going to go into Beat Saber and see what the, the latency situation is looking like. I'll update my game later so you don't have to wait. In fact, that update situation on PC, there's a few games now they're being updated. I think Beat Saber is one that doesn't actually break, but any games that get updated um, with the new sort of OpenXR runtime that Oculus use, that means you then can't use uh, Revive or Virtual Desktop on them. So I'd be very careful what game asks ask you to update, and I'll Google that before you update, otherwise you're going to lose the functionality in Virtual Desktop. So this isn't fantastic. I'm already at 41 milliseconds, which is worse than the Quest 2. Um, I've not even got my anti-analyzing, I'm still in potato mode on Beat Saber. So, anti-analyzing turned off, render scales 0 0.8. So, yeah, this isn't uh, this isn't looking good. This is actually a worse experience than the Quest 2. So, yeah, 43, 43 milliseconds motion to photon latency. Now, what I'm going to do is quit out of this. And I'm going to show you... If it doesn't go incredibly bugged, I'm going to show you that lowering all of these values as well, we'll just set these all back to default. So that's zero, that's zero. Let's put it all back to potato mode. And restart as administrator. I might have to close the application, but if I close this, and then restart on my PC. Jeez, if I can try it on pass through. The pass through is not good enough to look at your screen, by the way. We start as administrator. Yes, okay. Now, let's fire that up and let's get back into Oculus Link. Probably going to have to change this as well. I will see if it can let me do it on the devices. I'm going to quickly lower the render resolution right down. I'll leave it at 90 hertz because that's the best uh, available refresh rate and that give me the low the lowest latency number so set this back to 
the lowest potato mode I can possibly do and see if I can beat any of those motion to photon latency scores. Launching back into this. Just confirm everything in the debug tools. I'm going to have to choose none and performance to get my overlay back. And in the software, we've still got not got microphone. And we are at the lowest random resolution and 90 hertz still. Now, if I go back into Beat Saber, again, update later. Still not good. So, any claim that there is an improvement on Quest Free Link Cable is complete bullshit. I'm sorry I have to say it that way, but this um, it just needs calling out. There is absolutely no difference at the moment to any latency increase, uh, decrease using a Quest Free over a Quest 2. In fact, the Quest 2 with that 120 hertz mode working is going to get you less latency than the Quest Free because it just simply can't use 120 hertz, and there's absolutely no improvement whatsoever having a new chipset than using the Quest 2 on Oculus Link Cable. So that's my answer for the moment. If Meta come back and revise the software, I'll obviously test 120 hertz if I still have this headset. And yeah, they're going to need to change up the way Oculus Link works to get any improvement out of this, I think, at the, at the moment. There's, there's a high bar. Well, it's not even a high bar. It's a standard um, of old, old Rifts, an Oculus Rift CV1. OLED screen refreshes really quick. Um, that helps 90 hertz though. Um, it's only, only got 90 hertz, and that will be 18 milliseconds sat where I am now. And that was, regardless of my PC system spec, that was um, an old 6700K and a GTX 1070. And I'm still at potato mode here. I cannot get this latency low. So for me, I do not care about visuals on Oculus Link because what happens when you increase the visuals and increase the bitrate you then increase your latency. So 960 or whatever you can paste into the debug tools as your as your bitrate number, plus your resolution, plus a, a heavier game, because I've got so much headroom, I'm almost near the top of the graph here, a heavier game that sits down near 30%. All of that is gonna add into that latency number. So compared to playing on an Oculus Rift CV1, where even a heavy game, you'd be up near 30 milliseconds maybe, you're up 60 or probably even 55 or something on a Quest, Quest Link cable at 120 hertz, which is harder to push in the system, ironically. So, yeah, it's, it's not for me. Quest Link, I would not bother with this. It's clearly bugged at the moment. It's clearly missing features. Just use Virtual Desktop. Virtual Desktop can use 120 hertz mode. It's got m many more features. The, the bitrate bit rate may not be as much, but you've got a lot more features that you can use to improve your visuals. And crucially, you can have 120 hertz mode it works, it's never broken, the microphone works. Yeah, don't bother with Oculus Link. I don't know where the claims are coming from at the moment. It just seems to be hype. Or people just not even bothering to check metrics. Nothing has improved on Quest Link using the Quest 3 over the Quest 2. So that's your choice. If you want to choose this headset for the better lenses and better panels, that's fair enough. But there is absolutely no improvement to Quest Link experience. I just have to say that because no one else is at the moment. So that's it if you really want to uh, the Nova figures now I'm not going to go all the way to 960 and show you that should be pretty self-explanatory you can do that yourself if you really want to try prove me wrong but uh, 50 milliseconds I would hazard a guess you're going to be at, um, using using that on uh, Questlink cable this is cable by the way not Airlink so I'm actually not even in any network latency to this it's the best possible situation for PC VR on on Oculus streaming, so yeah, that's it. It's disappointing for me. Um, I would not use it. And again, with all of the other bugs in this OS at the moment, I would probably advise actually waiting. Um, Virtual Desktop is just hammering all these updates out at the moment. He's making some massive improvements, um, but the OS itself has got bugs. Um, same as we're on Quest Two, they've all carried into this Quest Three, and yeah, I would advise waiting at the moment to see what happens. If you're interested in PC VR and you actually want to use Link, I would wait because that clearly doesn't work properly at the moment. Um, I'm not even going to entertain Air Link. It's just no point. 
no point at all. Um, use virtual desktop. Um, and get, so yeah, just keep switching hand tracking to controllers. There's too many bugs in this for me at the moment. Um, the headset's faulty. I can't actually touch my headset as I wasn't going to lose tracking. Um, but that doesn't actually affect any of the performance on PC at the moment or any of the apps or any of the use case in here. So this is going back. I will get a replacement headset. By then, I hope Oculus Link can be fixed and I will retest. But right now, there is absolutely no improvement using Quest 3 over a Quest 2. Um, the only visual change you're going to get is because of the lenses and the panels, not the render resolution or any refresh rate. You're actually worse off using the Quest 3 than the Quest 2. So that's it. That's my takeaway from Oculus Link. I hope that gives you some insights and I hope someone else can do some proper testing because the truth just needs to be out there. I'm sick of all the... Uh, the claims everything's improved and 120 hertz feels so smooth and yeah people aren't checking metrics um i don't know where they're getting the smooth feel from controller response maybe the tracking is better in, in this headset but um that wouldn't apply to any metrics so you're actually performing 120 hertz in beat saber standalone or on pc you're not at 120 hertz so yeah that's uh that's my takeaway guys so sorry it's gone off on a bit of a rant i'll leave the video there thanks for watching and i hope it helped